Chair Forum now. This unique event is in partnership with the Heroes Foundation and is meant to connect children and youth with government and industry leaders and include their voices in national development discussion. The Heroes Foundation has been working over the past 20 years to help children and youth find the heroes within themselves. The Generation to Generation Council, or G2G, is the youth advisory team at Heroes and advises the organization at all levels from a youth perspective. Today we are joined by two members of G2G. We have Miss Mariah Wong Chung and of course Miss Giovanna Khan, who will be putting two gentlemen in the hot seat. And so joining Mariah and Giovanna for discussion is the Minister of Energy and Energy Industries, the Honorable Stuart Young, and of course Heroes Chair Joel Pemberton. Good morning, gentlemen. Good morning, ladies. Good morning. Good morning. But before we get to that discussion, let's start with a video, of course, where we will be hearing the youth perspective on energy and environmental sustainability. A small developing island state, Trinidad and Tobago is significantly at risk from the impacts of climate change, but we also rely on our energy sector to fuel our development. To balance this dynamic, we believe that everyone should understand the connection between their energy use and the environment. We want simple, accessible information about energy and environmental sustainability because for Trinidad and Tobago, this should be as fundamental as maths and English. We want to know that decision making in our country is done with respect for the environment and consideration for the future that young people will inherit. We want everyone to understand why the energy transition is important, how they can get involved and how it will benefit them. And we want to see real benefits to people as well, like core savings with renewable energy and affordable, accessible green energy solutions. The world is transitioning from traditional forms of energy to green energy. Transitions mean change, and change is never easy. Some people are uncomfortable with change when they don't understand what we're trying to achieve, the plans to get there, or the impact of change during a transition. So simple, easily accessible, child-friendly and man-on-the-street-friendly information is needed to help support our energy transition. Energy prices are increasing. Prices for everything are increasing because demand is increasing. Our main sources of energy are fossil fuels. And renewables are not becoming accessible quickly enough to meet demand. We need to find ways to reduce our energy demand while investing in and supporting the transition to cleaner energy sources that are not expensive or difficult for the average person to access. Our biggest energy consumers are manufacturing and industrial sectors. They are also the biggest contributors to our carbon footprint. We need them to lead the energy transition. And green energy needs to make sense for profit because it certainly makes sense for people and the planet. We have one home. Earth is our only home and we're only 1.5 degrees away from dangerous and irreversible effects of climate change. We have to act together. And we have to act today. Good morning everyone. My name is Mariah. I'm a curious 15-year-old and a future architect. I'm excited to be here with my friend Giovanna. Hi everyone, my name is Giovanna and I am 18 years old and I'm so excited to be here today representing the youths and speaking about the important issue of energy conservation. So Mariah, what it is that we want to know from Minister today? Well, for one, I would want to know what is the role of, of the Ministry of Energy and Energy Industries in the energy transition? Thank you all ladies and thank you all for having me. It's great to be here this morning. I don't think you all are more excited than I am. I love interacting with the young bright minds because you all are the ones who have to take it over. Let's understand something. Trinidad and Tobago, we are different to many countries in the world. 
So the energy transition that others like Europe, etc., are speaking about is going to be slightly different for us because our economy is based on oil and gas. The good news is, decades ago, those who came before us chose to use gas as the main staple. Gas is the cleanest fossil, fossil fuel that there is, so we are already in a good place. But I want you all to think, as we develop technology, how could we continue to utilize our gas in a cleaner way? Decarbonize it, less methane leaks, use technology to make sure it is utilized in a cleaner way. The Ministry of Energy is in charge of all of our resources, like oil and gas and quarries. How we're managing the energy transition by making sure we in all these global conversations, telling them how we can contribute to what is going on globally. You would have seen towards the end of last year, we signed the largest solar project in the whole CARICOM region, 112.2 megawatts of electricity from solar. We're also pushing towards other areas. We're gonna look at wind, other things. We've pushed and it, can, and it was accepted electric vehicles. There are no more taxes on the importation of electric vehicles. We're gonna move more towards that. Along with the Ministry of Public Utilities, we're also going to be pushing, and this is where we need you young people involved in addition to all I've just spoken about, energy efficiency. How do we use electricity and our energy more efficiently in Trinidad and Tobago? And I'll end my first part by saying, it's really up to you all, eh? 15, 18, you all are the ones who are getting ready to take up the battle and lead this country forward. So where we sit, where I personally sit right now is to give you all a good platform for the future so you all could run harder than we did. Thank you so much, Minister. And you know, you spoke about our global initiatives and the global initiatives that Trinidad and Tobago is taking. But if we look closer to home, mm -hmm. we have Venezuela right there. So what is the potential of Venezuelan gas in supporting the transition to this green energy? Giovanna, you have trumped all mm -hmm. media. <laughs> this morning, right? Because that is the question that all media are lining up to ask, but I chose to be with you all specifically this morning. What you saw happen yesterday is culmination of a lot, a lot of work between the Prime Minister, myself, and other actors since 2019 in relation to the sanctions from the United States. Before that, if you go and look, you'll see in 2018, we actually signed commercial term sheets with Venezuela. Venezuela, if we go outside to the Gulf, you could see Venezuela. It's seven miles off of the coast of Trinidad. They have the largest oil reserves in the world, and not far from here, 17 kilometers away, which is nothing, they have massive gas reserves. In fact, they also share gas reserves with us. The feedstock for our energy sector is natural gas. So the Prime Minister Rowley had a vision to make this happen. We began working on it in 2016, along with Venezuela. We have an excellent relationship with Venezuela. If I show you my phone up to last night, I was in contact with the Venezuelan Vice President after the announcement from the United States and want to thank everybody. How that gas is going to play into the energy transition, what it does is it gives your generation a future supply of gas because they have massive gas reserves, whereas we are smaller, a smaller borders and smaller maritime acreage, as we call it. So if we get access to the Venezuelan gas, it gives us literally a pipeline to a gas supply for the future of boundless amounts of gas that you can then use in the energy transition as we clean up our production of LNG that the world needs, ammonia, which is ammonia and methanol, and again, God has smiled on us in my view, ammonia and methanol are two of the cleanest energy commodities that exist, and they're right now accepting that both of them are fossil fuels of the future. And we in Trinidad and Tobago have both. We're the largest exporter of ammonia in the world up to last year. So that gas is gonna feed in, it's gonna keep our industries alive, and you all, as you go on to do your architecture, you will be looking at energy efficiency in homes, in offices, etc. You didn't say what you're going to do, but you all are the ones who now have to take that natural gas, make sure that whoever is using it in Trinidad does so in the cleanest possible way. Okay. I think Thank can you. I interject? I'm still here. So one thing, Kim, we should understand is is the importance of that announcement is 
is as follows. It allows us to get more gas over a longer period of time. Mm -hmm. Carbon capture also plays a picture. I'm sure you, know, you could talk about carbon mm -hmm. capture. To really make carbon capture economics work, you need the plants to be running for a longer period of time. So that allows to, that will allow the country to decarbonize these industries as well in line with climate change. Because you know, if you emit too much CO2, mm -hmm. that's an issue. If you capture it, store it in the ground permanently, you've actually decarbonized a clean fuel source. So I just want to add to that, um, Stuart, if you want to, because I'm sure the ministry is doing a lot of stuff in carbon capture, but that, that helps unlock that, that, that mm -hmm. picture as well, which is, which is critical for the issues you're raising on decarbonization. Mm -hmm. And I think just to add to that point, you spoke about you know decarbonizing the industries and the manufacturing and industrial industries are one of the biggest contributors to the carbon emissions. So you you spoke about that in terms of um, moving to the future using that um, cleaner gas, that cleaner that technology gas, in the future. But how are we implementing that now to assist in the transition? Excellent question. Transportation. Transportation is one of the single largest emitters, and we see it. Mm -hmm. We can literally see it when you're driving to school, you're going to school to and from, to work, etc. You are seeing the emissions. So in Trinidad, that is one of our largest emitters of bad gases mm -hmm. into the atmosphere. So what we're trying to do is to clean that up. So the electric vehicles were supposed to push us in that way. Unfortunately, globally, there's not in much in, enough supply of electric vehicles. So everybody in the world is fighting for electric vehicles. What we're about to do as a government is go out and change our transport, our public transport fleet, and we're looking to purchase 300 electric buses. Mm -hmm. These are the types of steps forward. If we use our electricity better, it means there's less consumption. Another area that I'm mandated that we're looking at is we can produce electricity a lot more efficiently not only from solar, we're also looking at wind, but even in the use of natural gas, because we have some very old plants. So I've challenged them and I've asked them to look at it. And if you just upgrade the technology and go to something called combined cycle, you immediately use less natural gas, and it's a cleaner, cleaner technology as well. So these are some of the things that we're looking at and that we're doing. But we really need the young people to buy into it and push it forward, because you'll be surprised the small initiatives that you all will do, the big difference that could make. But I want you all to remember something. At the end of the day, my view, you're Trinidadians, and we have a different economy to others. And I'll give you one example. Europe. Europe was one of the main places pushing that you must come off of fossil fuel, you must do this, you must, and they were going to implement taxes on our, our products, etc. As soon as the Russia-Ukraine war happened, go and see what they did. They reopened all of their coal plants. Coal is the worst emitter of bad gases into the atmosphere. So just keep that in mind. If they had the resources we did, they would have utilized it. As soon as they hit crisis, back to coal. So protect Trinidad and Tobago. That's your job now. <laughs> On that note of our generation, Mr. Monty, I have a question for you. How is HEROES supporting the energy transition? Very good question, awesome question. I mean, when we were younger, we never had this exposure to come on television and meet with leaders and so on. So what HEROES has been doing is, one, building a digital platform. And we have fully digitized and we've actually utilized the energy sector resources to replicate how they run their business at HEROES. So last year, we were able to impact or hit some over 700,000 individuals through that digital platform. And we want to expand that significantly and create a safe place for you all to come on board to learn more stuff, but most importantly, to listen to what you have to say. Because one of the big things we've realized is we're not listening. We go into the whole concept of, you know, we'll tell you what we think is best for you. And we realize, no, that, that, that mode, that's how we grew up, right? Uh, my parents say you have to do X, Y, Z, and blah, blah, blah. We're moving away from that. We only have to say, what do you want? What do you need? Create that safe digital environment and a safe place and a physical environment to also enlighten you, as, 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 as Minister Young was stating, what's happening in Europe, what's happening in, in the US, to bring reality to it and then, part, and then create a pathway forward. Mm -hmm. Lastly, we've been around for over 20 years, and I think you know, Heroes has really impacted thousands of lives. But when we reflected on ourselves, you know, what are we doing to create sustainable citizens, sustainable jobs, right? Uh, that's important. About 20,000 students sit SE every year. 
right? Um, how, when that comes out in a society, where are they going to work, right? So we're working with organizations locally and internationally to help place, right, um, and match the skills that are required for the future now. And over this year, that's going to be a key focus of the organization. You know, so if you want to be an architect, you know, how do you match you with that right job? What does it mean to be an architect? The soft skills training. Because, you know, when we're growing up, we taught the hard skills, you know, be an architect. But what about the soft skills training? You know, you hear on TV, how do you carry yourselves? All those things are very important. And we'll be rolling out special development programs in that regard to really, you know, give you the tools to succeed. Um, because we'll feel if we do all of this stuff and you just don't have a sustainable job, what are you going to do? Yeah. Now, yeah. Mr. Pemberton, we're going to pause right there for a little bit. We're going to take a quick break, but just to give a wrap up, of course, we would have been discussing the energy transition. We also spoke about how Heroes is going to be in charge of or actually supporting other organizations to get that employment sector ready when they come out of the university. So we're going to take a quick break and we're going to be right back. Remember, you're chatting with Giovanna Moriah, of course, the Minister of Energy and Energy Industries, Minister Stuart Young, and of course, Heroes Foundation, of course, Mr. Joel Pemberton. We're going to take a quick break can be right back. Stay with us. In our organization, you know, we, we engage quite a bit in, in what we call CSR, our Power to Make a Difference program, and our Power to Make a Difference program actually touches on, on, on quite a bit as well of what uh, the sustainability and the equity goals uh, align to these principles of responsible banking are all about, but it's, it's so much more. As we go forward at the group level, Okay, it is our intention to, 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 to spread this out, to let Republic Bank maybe be the cheerleader for this initiative in the Caribbean. And welcome back. This is our second 15 minutes where, of course, the Minister, the Minister of Energy and Energy Industries, Minister Stuart Young, and, of course, the Chairman of the Heroes Foundation, Joel uh, Pemberton, they are in the hot seat being interviewed by two young students. But we're going to go across the Minister now. Good morning and welcome back. It's indeed a pleasure to be here this morning with the Heroes Foundation and to be here really to listen to you, the young people. So Trinidad and Tobago have taken a decision, we're going to turn this around. Because you're hearing too much from Joel and myself. Let's hear from the young people. So put, a, put aside your scripts, you ask whatever questions, but also, more importantly for me, I want to hear from you all. How do you see the future? How do you see this thing that you all are calling the energy transition? Because you all obviously know a lot about it, and it's important for us to listen to you, the younger generation. Because as I said, we are just bridging time. We are here waiting to hand it over to you. So I am very, very interested in spending my time hearing from you. So over to you. OK, well, as you said, you know, this transition is new. And it, the way we're treating with it is new in terms of perspectives as well as expertise. And I think what Mr. Monty said is that Heroes is doing it in a new way. You know, we are here speaking to you all, having our ideas out. And HEROES program as helps us, you know, to come together as youths to speak about what we want. And some discussions that we had is, you know, how to encourage ministers and how to get our voice there in terms of having you all um, put sanctions into place to do like state-led examples of mm -hmm. what energy, the energy transition should look like. So an idea that we had was 
what you explained is going to happen with the transition of vehicles. Mm -hmm. So, and another, you know, example of what we would want you all to do is like in the buildings, you know, company buildings to take off the lights when they're not in use because we see lights on when we're driving down Port of Spain. And, um, you know, I think those examples would assist us in, well, motivate the rest of Trinidad into moving into the transition a little bit better. Okay. And you? Um, well, I am quite an optimistic person, but when I look to the future and when I see that we are not doing any change, and to just know that the future that I'm going to be handed or the youths are going to be handed is something messed up, something broken, that we have to figure out how to do it. And I'm like, I'm not looking forward to that future at all. So why I came on here is so that we could talk about this, we could do something to change it so that maybe the future will be a little brighter. Maybe we could have more opportunities to help because sometimes, as you know, I'm 15, and children's words or voices not always heard or always taken on. So for me, I am really glad that I'm here to talk about this. Um, so another thing that I want to see done in the future is that our first step into talking with you, Minister, I would want to see more children and more teenagers in schools and stuff being, letting out their voices, their ideas, saying like what future that they would want to see. That's my idea that I would want to see for the future. Yeah, Thank and you. you know, I think you would understand the energy sector better than any of us. And I think you sh could give us some examples of how we can reduce our energy demands, you know, as individuals. Two perfect sets of discussions and submissions from you all. Let's start with the, one of the simple points that you made that is a huge point, taking off lights. That is something we all need to do. You all would be surprised to know as a government when we came in in 2015, that is something we mandated. There are some government offices that you cannot find light switches to turn the lights off. Every day when I leave the Ministry of Energy and that office, I switch off the lights as I leave. I am one person. Everybody needs to switch off the lights because you're right. Why are we leaving electricity burning at night? We mandated that all schools turn off lights unless it's critical lights for security reasons. As you know, there are certain uh, technology you could put on motion detectors that the lights will only come on if there's motion, mm -hmm. so that fulfills security. You need the young people to put the pressure on to get those things done. Transport. Why can't we carpool? I am guilty of it. I never call up a friend and say, look, where are you going? Can we go together and these types of things? This is how we need to start changing the mindset. Keep your optimism. You are going into architecture. You're going to lead the way in how you develop more efficient buildings, etc. But let me tell you something. The government is not blind to all of this. I certainly listen, and many of my colleagues, if not all, I'm sure all, are listening to the young people. So in the energy space, what Monty was speaking about, the carbon capture, sequestration, utilization, i.e. taking the harmful carbon out of all of the production and doing something with it. I have been pushing, and we're going to get it done. We're blessed. Point Lisas is a cluster of plants, meaning they're all in the same area. Not many other industrial places in the world have that. So I'm pushing all of the plants. Let's work together, share the cost to capture the carbon. NGC, which is our national gas company, and Heritage, which is our oil production company, both of them have been using satellite technology to trace where there may be harmful gas emissions in pipelines. We have done that work. So when former Secretary of State John Kerry met with the Prime Minister and myself and said, sign the methane pledge, meaning we will look towards the reduction of methane, which is the most harmful greenhouse gas there is in, in all of this, we said, hey, we've gone further than that in Trinidad. We've already started identifying it. We're going to stop the leaks. But methane is also natural gas. If we could capture the methane, we in Trinidad and Tobago know how to monetize it. So let's turn a bad into a good. We are pushing, and you would have heard the Prime Minister earlier this week on Monday at the Energy Conference talk about feeding tariffs for solar. 
So in other words, let us make it easier for persons to put solar panels on their homes. If you have excess electricity generation generated from your solar panel, you could sell it back to the state, feed it into the grid. These are some of the things. I mean, there's a whole host, and maybe we don't speak about it enough. But you, the young people, this is why I want to hear from you. What, what are your questions? How do you think we should be doing it? Because we are going to hand over a good place to you. But you're right. The world is more and more broken because of global climate change. Your voices are also important. Don't go against the fossil fuels. Don't go and say, shut down hydrocarbons and don't use oil and gas anymore, because that's what our economy is based on. Use it responsibly. Use the technology. How do we make sure that it is done in a way that is the least harmful for the environment? And that is the main thing. And then let me tell you all something, and I'm going to get in trouble for this at some stage, yeah? because it is the wealthy, developed countries who have done the most harm in pollution. It is us, the smaller, developing countries, who are suffering the most. The hurricanes, the floods, the landslides, the heavier than usual rainfall, the droughts in certain areas, but now the whole world is being affected. So you, the young people, what I would ask you all to do is be balanced in how you think about it. The answer is not to scream and say, shut down everything, you know, all oil and gas is bad and is evil and is destroying the world. Think about what is the solution? How do we do this in a better way? How do we clean it up, etc.? Put your, your, your young, bright minds that aren't constrained by any old school thoughts to work. And I am ready to listen, and I'm sure that the government is ready to listen. Well, let me thank the Minister of Energy and Energy Industries, Minister Stuart Young, and of course, the Chairman of the Heroes Foundation, Mr. Joel Pemberton. I never had this opportunity when I was younger to interview people and just to get their thoughts in terms of where we see the future of our country going. And I know that these two young ladies are truly, truly appreciative of you spending your time with them and sharing how we can move the energy sector forward in TNT. So, gentlemen, thank you so much. Let me also say a special thank you to Mariah Wong Chung and, of course, Giovanna Khan for coming in and also picking the Minister brain about how we see energy in TNT. Yeah, the Now Morning Show, we're going to take a break and be right back, but we have the minister staying with us up next, so you don't want to miss that. Stay with us.